We're in the Carpathian Mountains of Slovakia looking for bear tracks, wolf tracks, even maybe lynx tracks. And we're going to discuss why these large carnivores are really important to the forests of Central Europe. It's February and the Carpathian Mountains of northern Slovakia are still cloaked in deep snow that has refrozen into a scratchy crust after a recent thaw. I've joined a team from Biosphere Expeditions, a non-profit conservation project that, here in Slovakia, allows biodiversity enthusiasts to join and help scientists document the numbers and movements of Europe's large predators. There's me, there's Jill from England, Idan from Israel, Ed from Washington, and Tomas Hulik, a Slovak scientist who's leading the research today. I asked Tomas why we should value these animals. I think that's very important. They are really like a key key species in the in the forest. So they somehow they manage other other species. They manage the ungulates. They they are like a senator. So they manage the the carcasses uh, in the forest. So they play a really a very important role in the ecosystem. The large carnivores move in rugged terrain here in the Lipova Valley, so following their tracks on snowshoes is sometimes challenging, but it's also spectacular. And it's rewarding. After about an hour, the team comes across the print of a reclusive lynx. Ed photographs the print using a ruler to show its size, while the rest of the team mark the position on a GPS machine. Then Thomas fixes a camera to a nearby small tree, hoping to capture footage of the shy feline. Just now we are setting up the camera trap because we found a place where lynxes mark the territory. Just now we are in the mating season of the lynxes, so they are also communicating by urine. So we hope that. Lynx will mark also our camera trap with urine and we will see it then. We set off again looking for more prints. The overall expedition leader is Malika Fetak from Germany. She says the amateur researchers play an important role in the project. They can basically make the same contribution as a true scientist simply by telling them, you know, what signs and tracks to look for in the field. A field biologist is no more than a stamp collector. So you need eyes and feet to walk the ground and to look for signs and tracks and feces and record that all in the data sheet. So that's what's in it for science, but what's in it for the volunteers? I think it's um, a personal contact to local people to get um, hands-on conservation, to work with real scientists out in the field and to be um, confident that the data that is collected is going to contribute to a good cause or for a good reason. Certainly that's the motivation for Ed, who's used his holiday time to volunteer and has travelled all the way over to Slovakia from the United States. He says it's important to know the numbers of wolves in particular because this basic research might save some of them from being shot by hunters. Uh, contributing to the work that uh, people like Tomas, you know, people like that, what, the, what they are doing, um, helping to further, you know, the the science and the, and the causes he's trying to take on. I know one of the things that he does with his data is he tries to report to the commission that grants hunting permits, and he has data that can show, you know, uh, factual wolf populations versus just the speculation. And so uh, I think sometimes, maybe not just in Slovakia, but in other places, the, the population gets inflated, perhaps, so they will issue more hunting permits. And so he's able to document, based on the best of his knowledge, what the wolf population is. Tomas says the hunting is a real problem. The wolves can be a hunt from 15 November till, uh, till January or till quota is filled. Usually the quota, uh, I think that this year was around 70 animals. And when you imagine that we have roughly around 300, 400 wolves, and each year the hunters are allowed to shut down nearly one third of population, so it's quite horrible. 
And that's why your work is so important, because when we say there are roughly 400, we mean roughly. We don't know exactly how many, so we need to know how many there are, um, so we know what sort of impact the hunting is having on their numbers. Yeah, that's it. Directly for the, uh, that's one of the reasons why we are, why we are making here the, the research. Next, we come across some bear tracks. Very exciting for me and rather confusing. During the snowy months, I thought bears hibernated. Usually the bears are sleeping or hibernating, but they are hibernating only because they don't have a food. So and in the moment we have a lot of beach fruits in the forest, so it was a really good year for the beach fruit. So for the reason the bear don't have to sleep. Here's a little kind of a tree stump. Uh, it's got some markings on it. This is where a bear comes and rubs himself. Why? They are leaving the messages for other bears. So that's my territory and so on, so on. So, so it's something like a telephone spot or they are leaving the messages. This is bear Facebook. Yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> okay. Noro, a Slovakian nature photographer and cameraman, has a great passion for the bears. People are shy about the bears, but the reality is completely different. When there is no human kills from the bear in the last hundred years in Slovakia, so it's really not so bad how his reputation is. Then it's off further into the forest, sometimes on well-trodden paths, sometimes over steep, uneven ground. Idan, back in Israel, is a software engineer. This is all a break from his everyday life, a chance to get some fresh perspectives and to challenge himself too. Walking with snowshoes, yeah, it's quite different than what I'm used to. That's the hard part, but it's part of the experience, I think, and it's part of the sense of, uh, you know, of achievement. You know, that I walked uh, 10 to 20 miles in snowshoes on the mountains. Not something you get to do in Israel, so yeah, it's fun. And what do wolves and bears need so that they can survive in modern Europe? They just need the quiet and they, they just uh, need the, I don't know, uh, the right... Uh, peaceful environment. Yeah, uh, peaceful environment and uh, good and positive thinking of the people, that they are not uh, the biggest beast in, in the forest and they don't have to be afraid of the wolves and the, uh, the bears and they or the people have to lose their syndrome of red cap. <laughs> <laughs>